Anyway, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to Karate Without Belts and our grand return after our, our September hiatus. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, I'm always John. And I'm Jeremy. Welcome back, Jeremy. Well, thank you very much. And you gotta have one shout out to the New Zealand All Blacks. Go All Blacks. So that's for all my friends in New Zealand. Yeah, there's um it's there's rugby, the, there's rugby is big in New Zealand, but is well hosted in Japan. Oh it is. I've been I've been I've been following the World Cup. It's like you know I, I can't hardly get any of the games, but I've been following it as much as I can. So but anyway, I'm st st still an all blacks person, so I'm like go all blacks and here we go. So anyway. They are scoring goal units and wearing their costumes very well. So, good deal. Awesome. Good deal indeed. Good deal indeed. Um, I'm sorry I'm not there. So. I, I recently, actually I taught my students about American football, and I had to very much distinguish that this is not rugby and this is not soccer. It is football. It's, 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 it's not the thing. But because they're all Japanese, I'm just like I'm trying to get them to understand like they, they wear very heavy gear and run. I'm just I was just like, who does kendo in the room? And like two kids raise their hand, like put your kendo gear on. Can you run? They're like, no, you're not supposed to run in kendo gear. I'm like, imagine running in that, running in your kendo gear and trying to catch a ball um, horizontally at the same time. And they're like, what? Like, yeah, that's basically American football. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. So. So what have you been up to, Jeremy? I know you have been... I don't know if you really want to go into much detail, but I know you've been dealing with some medical stuff. Yeah, um, I'll just I'll just mention it. Um, um, we, we've had some really bad storms here in the Midwest over the last month, month and a half. Um, one night, um, real bad, real bad storm. I thought... Uh, screen door was getting ready to rip off the front of the house and so um yeah we had about 70 mile an hour winds and i thought i heard it i was i got up in the middle of the night three o'clock in the morning well yeah for some reason the house is kind of dark at that point which should be because you should be asleep and so as i was going downstairs i missed the stairs and took a pretty nasty fall down the stairs and I've been dealing with uh, rehabilitation for the last literally month Please. five weeks five weeks dealing with that and so yeah so I've got good days and bad days so but yeah I today was an okay day I, I was able to walk and other days it's it's pretty pretty bleak so it's it's like i i do good to get out of my chair because all the swelling and everything else but but you know that's that's the hand that life has hit me with and so from that um, after we took x-rays we found out that i'm um, battling arthritis osteoarthritis to be exact so um, okay. so that's it's a it's 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 a new battle in my life. I, what to do, and so it's it's just the way it is. So, but it it, it is what it is, and you know, you put your boots on and you walk forward through life. You know, even Big though I'm, as I'm walking, it's much slower now. So, but that's okay. Keep walking. Regardless, we are glad to have you back, my friend, um, and we're glad to have you on. Um, I know how I don't personally know how bad that is um the worst thing i've had is killing tendonitis and a sprained ankle at the same time on two different feet so um i hope i never have to deal with that but um yeah, we're yeah. Happy about it. so but we're glad you're here with us um so in terms of martial arts you've really had to kind of slow it down Oh, uh, yeah, I've, it's pretty much, it, it's almost completely stopped. I mean, 
Um, I, I do a little bit. I mean, there's absolutely no footwork I can do now because because uh, right now I'm waiting for my braces to come in, things like that. Um, until then, I can't really put a lot of pressure. Can't do a lot of a lot of movement, especially you know footwork or anything like that. So that's kind right. of a bummer. it's kind of a bummer. Even though sometimes if I'm making the kids sandwiches, I'm still right foot, left foot, turn just slowly, you know, I'll still do a little bit of that, but that's about the extent. Yeah. And I think that's, that's as, I mean, if you, you can even do that slowly, I think that's better than, well, frankly, nothing. Um, yeah. I know I was much, much, much less worse off than that. And I'm just like, Oh God, I can't try it. Um, and as I've got, it's weird as I've gotten older, I've realized the more kind of like, just like effort, do it mm -hmm. and get it over with. Um, and kind of the more, more stuff I've, uh, kind of taken out, the more I've realized I can put in, if that makes sense. So. Oh yeah. yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So, so that's what I've been dealing with. So but that's the way it goes. So. Recently, I've been doing, um, since uh, the school year has started in earnest, I've had a pretty decent schedule of, like, morning and evening, but always kind of interrupted by work. So, at least a couple different, a couple decent training sessions in a week I've been getting in, getting in but... Again, because of my re remote location, I don't get a lot of uh, time with other people. So, but hopefully that'll that'll change maybe in November or December. We'll see. No, I got you. That's cool. That's cool. So, cool. So, one thing we were talking about before we got, we really got started in earnest today eh, was um, talking about like what has uh, as many people have before or when they start training or or after they've started training or when they continue to start training or they back off and, and go back into it again as influences um outside and otherwise and you brought it up and i thought it was something that i don't think we we think about too much because there's always an, a weird unconscious influence that that pushes us to go train um, and maybe outside factors that kind of spark a fire or maybe even internal factors within our training that can make us continue. And that's where we're going to kind of go on today. We're talking about kind of our influences to and for training. Um, Jeremy, I want to kind of pass the ball to you for this to kind of get us started off because I got one or two things for it. Um, but I just wanted to see, see where you wanted to go with it first. Um, we're talking about influences and kind of internal and external all the way around. I, you know, I, I think one of the, I think one of the big influences to most people, some way, somehow, somewhere, most of us have seen some movie that was like, whoa, that is cool. You know, I mean, just right. something that just kind of jog us like, wow, that's kind of cool. Um, you know, I, I remember... I remember when the Karate Kid actually came out. I mean, uh, it was it was in the movie theaters, you know. Dang it, son! I, you know, I mean, it was it was a cool, cool movie, you know. I it, it wasn't wasn't till later till it was funny when it came out. I was too stupid to actually understand everything that was actually in the movie, but it was like, yeah, that's kind of a fun movie. I think kind of. Kind of cool, and then of course you had you know John Claude and Steven Seagal and Chuck Norris and all, all those people come along, and it's like, oh wow, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, that'd be kind of cool, and that's some of the things that just kind of jump started certain things. And um, I, I even hate to admit it, probably uh, one of 
one of the Steven Seagal's movies was like, wow, he's a big guy. I'm a big guy. He can move really well. I'd like to be able to do that. And I went to the first place that was open the next day. You know, did you want um, the same cut? I I think maybe I wanted it for maybe you know probably for about three or six months and, until I figured out oh, that's kind of that looked pretty stupid with that. But you know, if it works for somebody else, hey, more power to them. But me, no, I just. Um, but no, I. I couldn't get past the fact that I can't stand having my hair touch touch my ears, so I'm like, yeah, no, I don't <laughs> think that's good. <laughs> I can't. I just, I, to do martial arts, ah, keep the hair off the ears. Yeah, well, I mean, once it, once it's like that, I'm like, I'll just shave this down. All right, you know, but but I mean, it, I think that's one of the things that kind of got me enthralled in it, and it's like, all right, you know, and then after you start training, it's like. Yeah, it was kind of goofy, but it did kind of propel me to go go start training and and stuff. So I I think in that aspect that was pretty cool, you know. So yeah, but. I think I mean the, I mean that taps into a kind of a larger topic of like martial artists inspired by that shtick of the eighties. Um, in early nine, in early nineties. Yeah, also. not early nineties too. Which I mean, I, um, I'll show my age here a little. Like I didn't really see that. I don't think you you saw Karate Kid in theaters. I didn't. Um, yeah, yeah. But I I I do like by the time because the mid nineties were kind of more my time of um, development. Uh, I had like that had already seeped into the cultural. I don't know membrane. At least yeah. in the United States. Um, interesting fact: Karate Kid in Japan is known as Best Kid. <clears throat> so they do not call it Karate Kid; they call it Best Kid. <clears throat> um, and I didn't. When you talk about Karate Kid, I think that's interesting. Um, I've always kind of wanted to tackle it in its own, like, because there's thing. Uh, maybe I'll take up to talk about it a little here, but um, Karate Kid. I didn't. When I started Karate, it was like six months after I started Karate. It was the summer. And my mom was like, hey, I rented Karate Kid because you started karate. I'm like, why? Because I was like, that's just some corny movie. And I didn't want to watch that. And then I put it in and I was like, holy Christmas. This is everything that karate should be. And yeah. like, obviously, I would go back to that karate school and it was like, it was nothing like that at all. Um, <laughs> Pat Mochita yeah. was not there. Yeah. Um, well, no, not Pat Mochita. Pat Morita. Morita. Uh all, all I'm glad is I didn't have to sand the floor and paint the fence. That's all, you know. I, granted, I did my share of whatever, you know, whatever was going on that day in class. But I'm just glad I wasn't doing that. But, but I mean, I, I can appreciate it, you know, looking back on it now. But it's it it it's interesting. So, yeah, I mean, do you think that was for better or for worse? Like, is especially when we're talking about karate. Um, and maybe even the image of karate that influenced a lot of people to go into martial arts or walk into that mall dojo or whatever. Oh. Um, you oh. just have, you just happen to kind of luck in the draw in terms of that. I think. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, I think I got very lucky on that deal. I could, I could have got got stuck with some bonehead instructor, but. You know, I, I I had a very fantastic first instructor. I got very lucky, um, but yeah, when yeah after that movie, I mean, it it totally changed a lot of things because previously all you saw were, I mean, Bruce Lee and pretty much Chuck Norris, you know, Jim Bob School Whoop Ass kind of movies. It was like that's all there really was to it, and it there wasn't. Hey, this is what it's kind of about. Now, it's not everything, but it did give a different perspective on what what martial arts was about. And I think, you know, and so I think a lot of moms and things like that are like, well, that'd be a good thing. To, maybe that's not such a bad thing to be a part of, you know, so instead of, you know, some goofy people who were just in it for tough man contests or something like that. So, was, 
I, I think I think that's one of the things that it really opened up just just the culture in, in having a conversation about it in, in America especially so yeah just, I think you still then like it's funny you say that and then like flip over to the hotheads of that era where were the Van Dams and the um Seagals um yeah you know I I there I mean just about those sunglasses right now, and he like who, who was he? He was like he was some like Russian like moguls like personal like trainer for what? I, I don't know. I mean, still like his. There's still a couple movies. I I, I just like I just can't believe he's in this, but it's it's actually a good movie. You know, like hard hard to kill. Still, I, I still absolutely love that movie. I mean, it's like. It's still a good movie. Not, not a fan of his personally, but it's like okay, so. But yeah, it's it's just what it is. So, but yeah, I, I think to get people involved, I think movies takes a real big, big credit in that in that regard. I mean, Bruce Lee kind of got people involved in the late 60s early 70s you know with the green hornet and, and um you know the chinese connection and some of the other movie you enter the dragon especially you oh know, it's, dragon oh, oh i have plans to take that thing apart like a like a really really <laughs> bad idea said um that's, that's for another day but um no i i 100 agree 100 agree though um, and what he did to help, um, especially what he did to help get Asian Americans into the mainstream, yeah. is, is kind of is is very huge. Not really for us to talk about, but um, I, we uh, cannot we cannot pass by with the acknowledgement. Um, also, what Pat Morita went went through to like because he's like especially when he went from his role from Happy Days to being Mr. Miyagi. <laughs> And if you listen to him talk about like how he how he had to convince the people in Happy Days that he was a Chinese guy, and then he had to change that into being a Japanese guy, though he is actually Japanese ethnicity. Like, there's an interview with like Lifetime TV about that. It's insane. It's in, it's 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 insane from today's standards. But um, yeah, we have to. We cannot. It's weird because do you ever think there's like a, a weird stigma or a, a kind of being like that? Yeah, that's a thing, but we don't really talk about it. Yeah, that 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 that's, that's not really what we talk about. It's not really what we do. Um, from a lot of people when we they, when you know we bring up these things from culture, especially movies, um, like martial artists, be like, no, 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 we don't talk about that thing. I I don't know. I mean, I do. I mean, I'm you know, it, it's not. It's not something that I'm like, oh, you know, I, I plan to be, you know, you know, black belt in this and the other. No, I, I mean, I, I went in and it's like, okay, this is kind of fun to do, you know, do, 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 you know, I was kind of, you know, I was really stupid about it, to be perfectly honest. And then I, I got into it and it was cool, you know, and yeah, I, I, I think, you know, you know, rolling into from from movies, but also I think also it really developed the, the complete person who I became because it took a lot of people that mentored me into my training. Mm. It, and like I'll I'll never forget this. Um, my uh, my high school basketball coach. I'll, I'll never forget. I, I will never forget that guy. I mean, he 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 made Bobby Knight look like a kindergarten teacher. I mean, gee, man, Christmas. I mean, holy catfish. I it, I, I remember one night he had us run. He had us run the whole entire time until literally we couldn't run any longer. And when we left, we were literally crawling out of the gym. And that's how it, it was in. And what I mean by that is, okay, you're talking about basketball, maybe you're talking about martial arts, but the thing of it is, 
he developed that sense of perseverance. Sometimes you just got to deal with when you're when you're going through stuff. I mean, I remember, I remember, I remember Robbie, my first instructor. We we would have Monday night class, and it, it, heaven help us if there was a new person in there because he did everything he could to make him either pass out or puke. I mean. It was like, oh, gee, my Christmas. I mean, you, you would just, you know, push up, push up, push up, crunch, 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 dips, you know, pull ups. I, I mean, it was just a constant training barrage. It, it was just insane. You know, I, I look back on that and I'm like, how in the heck did I even live through that, much less do it? But I think my, my basketball coach, had that influence on me to to persevere through things like that right I, I, what a lot of people don't realize um especially when it comes to martial artists because the martial arts teacher is monolith for a lot of people that that person knows all does all sees all and that that person encompasses all and that in fact that doesn't that's not true um and even you go back to examples of Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee used cha cha his lessons from his cha cha days, yeah. um, dancing in his martial arts. Yeah. And so, like, when you don't have good influences coming from other people and other things in your life to integrate them to what you do, then it doesn't really work out. Um, like, I remember this kind of this comes out of kind of far left field, but um, when I when I was a kid, the three things I would do, I had like three big things that I would do. Um, karate was one of them, but then the other one was like theater. Mm -hmm. I was very much of like a theater nerd, not like a dramatic person. No, not me. I'm not a dramatic person. But um, one of my teachers, uh, she was a oral speech and, and performance teacher. And kindest the littlest old lady <laughs> you'd never see her involved in martial arts ever but she she taught me a lot of very important life lessons like treating people as people first and then mm -hmm. whatever you're doing with them as that second but as to always engage with those people first and she right. always emphasized that with, especially with what you're doing and how you're engaging with people because you have to give people criticism because you have to kind of judge, because you have to kind of judge their performances or how they're doing, and you should be able to tell them, you know, what they're what they're doing is wrong, or how, maybe what you can do make the make what they do better. And later on down the road, when I started teaching martial arts, and you know, my profession now is teaching, but um, those lessons there, not from anything I had done with martial arts, had really made that possible to be able to like all right you're doing that wrong this is why you're doing that wrong okay this is this is incorrect this is why this is incorrect one more time and so i i mean i could attribute that kind of influence as well yeah i i, I think that's i think that's been huge i mean from a perseverance standpoint um you know and then i look at I look at some of the some of the things that I went through as far as collegiate studies. You know, I I mean my I've got a degree in math with a minor in physics. And I I think that played into being able to analyze things from a whole different perspective on a very not over technical, not without getting over technical, but I can analyze things very minutely. Now, is it perfect? No. But a lot of times, a lot of times I'll catch a lot of details or I'll catch something a little different than somebody else will pick up. And I'll, I'll never forget what was it. We're we're in a we're in a seminar with with Sensei and and he's doing something 
Yeah, it's funny. I mean, it's real hard to tell what he was doing. It was something around the wrist. And and for some reason, I, I don't know why, but I mean, Mr. Link was one to work with me. And I, I was sure. You know, I, I was I was I, I would say I was pretty pretty honored that he came over to me and he wanted to work with me. I was like, wow, that's pretty cool, you know. Um, I, I, I have, I still have a lot of respect for the guy. I really do. And, and we, we were doing something. I'm like, you know, we we're trying to figure out what he was, what he was doing up here, you know, with, with the rip, because you could see he was doing something, but you couldn't figure it out. I'm like, well, what about this? And I tried something, you know, it, it was, all I did was just shift, shift my hand just a little bit. And it, it wasn't hardly anything at all. And I'm, I don't even think I've ever even told this story. But all I know is Greg's knees literally buckled just from this little shift that I did with my hands on the wrist. And all of a sudden, as soon as, as, soon as he come back up, he goes, what'd you do? What'd you do? What'd you do? What'd you? I mean, just like, whoa. And I... I I showed him what I did, and he goes, hold on, hold on, hold on, you know, and he's going all over, <laughs> he tested it out with everybody. <laughs> okay, yeah, well, I'm going to go to the bathroom now, I'm going to see her, <laughs> you know, but I mean, I was, I, I, I don't know if, you know, whatever, I mean, I, I saw, I saw him do something, and I was like, I was able to like, let's try something like this, you know, Okay, your hand moves this way, do you know? And it wasn't, I mean, everything else was lined up. It was, it was just something small he was doing with his hand. And it was just like, let's try this. I don't know. And so it, it, was, it was just kind of, it, it was kind of an interesting deal. But I, I think just that moment alone took me back to a lot of physics, math, analytics. You know, it was like, okay, let's, let's, break this down where where's the commonality where it's not working and so but anyway i mean that's just well and that and that goes into a lot of like if you don't have that because a lot of martial artists get maybe unduly labeled as meatheads yeah um, <laughs> that, like it's between here and here is nothing but meat um yeah. and unfortunately there's and but on the other side, you get the over the scrawny guy in the white pajamas who who thinks because he's doing a lot of fun little moves, he can suddenly beat up the meathead. Um, yeah, yeah. No, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> and but when you don't really like say because that's a the study we don't really talk about the study part of martial arts where it's not just. Because there's practice, and then there's there's learning, but there's also study, and those yeah. two things are different things, enti almost entirely. Um, and I don't think there's really much of an apparatus in which we really do that, other than just person on person training, which. Well, no, none of that, but I think it, it gets back to something we've talked about before. It's like everybody has a different way of learning. And they do. Right, right, right. I mean, it's funny. A guy working on we had this conversation. When I was going through my master's program, I I could not. I I have a horrible time memorizing stuff. I really do. So I have to change it from memorization to how can I analytically see this in this way. And so, and so I have to almost completely revise learning it and then relearn it a different way and then I learn it. Really strange, but it's worked for me, so I can't can't complain. Now, somebody else, that probably wouldn't work for. But for me, that's what works for me. So well and another thing uh, well the thing about that is they might not, not learn it in that way. Right. Because martial arts le learning tends to be there, there tends not, not to be, it tends to be very insular, right? right? It tends to be very much, this is the way we do things. This is how I was taught. 
and then you kind of see the, the the teacher clones pop up in schools where they'll just kind of repeat the same things their teacher says but not really have much of an explanation behind it and those people aren't really able to bring in their outside influences or their outside expertise to that sometimes right. not all the time but no oh no i th- i no, I think it's a great point because I mean, yeah, you you see a lot of. I mean, I know you've heard the term Mac Dojo. I mean, it's kind of like, hey, guess what? We're stamping out Big Macs today. Boom, 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 boom. boom. As opposed to Mick Dojo. Yeah, which yeah, is, which is the off-brand version, of, which is a different brand of that, which they're currently in a lawsuit with. <laughs> Come on, you were mentioning '80s movies. I had to, I had to make a coming to America reference. Um, hey, hey, you, you know what's funny? I, I did see that movie on the other day, and I was like, oh my goodness! Like some, some of the lines from that, I just, oh my goodness! Things like, you yeah. could not do today. Um, <laughs> things you could not do today. Um, oh, oh my goodness! Mac Dojo no. versus the Mac Dojo. Well, and and it. it those things always um, um, surprise me because they're always they have no influence right they have no like they have no like they, they permeate and they, they kind of almost influence uh, the, the way of the business but the business model has kind of kicked out anything real right mm-hmm. I, you know I, I, this gets into an interesting debate because I have several thoughts about this you know, you look at it from a military standpoint, you're, you're training soldiers, you're training, so, you know, like a military, you, you know, when you're training privates, you don't want them to think, you want them to do as you tell them to do. Boom, boom, boom. And I, and I get it. Now, that was one of Sakagawa's big, big pleas to the Japanese military back in the day, as to yeah. make karate a part of the curriculum at school. Yeah. So, you're gonna make up soldiers because you've gotten everyone's doing karate, but yeah, it, well, you know, it, it's but <clears throat> I mean, are you just a drill instructor or are you a leader in your in your art? Are you trying to lead the next generation of people to go beyond where you were? I mean, obviously, or not, or or do you think? I'm the master of all knowledge, therefore, whatever comes from me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to me, I, I, all I look at is like, you know, I've been fortunate to have, you know, three great instructors. They've taught me a ton of stuff. And, you know, whatever I can give that they gave me so that it furthers on, you know, I, I feel like that's. That's the best I can do, and I, 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 I don't. I'm not trying to think that. Oh, I, I'm, I'm this. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm just a guy who was very fortunate to have great instructors. That's the way I've always looked at it. Right. And like, but you're also able to, to kind of, not separate yourself, but in, integrate those lessons from other things you've learned. Um, yeah. but those uh, but those outside influences have also in turn helped you continue to train. Right. And you know, and I think moving on from that, I think probably one of the other things has been some of my separate leadership training that I've done with different organizations and things like that. Um, I'll never forget hearing um uh, Listening to a guy, a um, guy named Tim Sanders, wrote a pretty interesting, wrote, wrote a couple interesting books, but I'll, I'll never forget one statement he said, and he always said, you will learn more about leadership and about yourself if you take the time to get to know other people other than yourself. And that tied back to what Sensei and several other instructors have talked about. And that was, you know, when you start finding the commonality of how people work and how how they react and how they do things, 
not only can you work work with, or I shouldn't say work, but you can deal with them on a confrontation level, but then also you you can really build a bridge when you need to. And what's interesting. I, I'll never forget it. I, I was working for a company several years ago. We're in the middle of this board meeting, you know. What I mean, everybody's just da 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 da, I'm just yelling and screaming, and you know, I'm just sitting there and, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they're like, "Well, what do you have to say?" And I'm like, "I'm just listening until you guys finish and shut up, so we can actually make progress." You know, and everybody's just kind of looking at me. But I I had gotten to know every person that was in that board meeting enough to know when I could say, are you people done yet? Or are you going to just keep bitching, you know? And that was just kind of, and all of a sudden, all the griping stopped and we got down to business and straight on it. And so I, I think, I think that plays a lot into it too. And you, you look at self-defense, you know, I, I've talked about the, the incident that I had in the in the convenience store where the guy who was getting ready to pull a gun out. And I think if I wouldn't be, if I wouldn't have known, I think something had to do with me being able to, to know that person very, very quickly to do what I did. As opposed to just a physical confrontation. It was like, you know, let, let's step back. Let, you don't need to do this. Right. One's, t one's t touching like more on like a personal, emotional, mental, like intellectual core. The other is, would just be physical. Um, I'm not entirely sure if this is accurate. And people, psychologists, correct me. Um, all the psychologists who are tuning into our podcast. But um, physical violence physical behavior is brought on by either a complete discontentment for what's going on around you or antisocial behavior right like generally when that when those th when those things spark off very easily like when you're willing to do that that and that is exemplary of that um which if you're teaching people to behave like that you're teaching a group of people become suddenly antisocial, like become very antisocial and only respond with their physical um, abilities, not necessarily with their other abilities, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, absolutely. So, or, or at least I agree with it. So, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's just, yeah, just getting to know people, basically. I, I know I know there are different times, like, and I, I know you've heard the different stories with with Mr. Oyata and things like that, and it, it's, you know, some, one of my favorites, and I, I, that's one that I got to witness. We're, we're coming back from Okinawa, and he, you know, we're, we're standing in line to get on the plane and stuff. And so as we're just kind of talking and doing this, he goes up to the counter, pulls out his cane, you know, and he just hobbles up to the, up to the ticket counter and asks to get upgraded to first class and boom, he's in first class and all us dummies are in the back and, you know, suffering and coach, you know, for, 14 15 hour flight you know but but he he knew how to i wouldn't say he he knew how to get the response out of people that that they needed or that he needed right make things. yeah and i'm not i'm not trying to get what well, he was you know he was just manipulating the situation no he, he, I, Want to go there? That's somebody else. But he well, he... I'm, I'm to a degree that's not entirely inaccurate. I uh, that's not that's not wrong necessarily necessarily a wrong thing to say. But I mean, it is using that advantage. How you use that advantage is kind of maybe a d different topic in that regard. But I mean, yeah, it, I mean, especially it's like 
do you want to fight a bunch of people or do you just want to walk away? Do you want to get confrontational or do you just want what, what you, want what you want and want and be able to kind of leave it alone? Right. I, I mean, and, and you you can go out on YouTube and see, oh, some, these people are picking on some old man, you know, and you see this little old man, you know, kind of hobbling along or whatever, and all of a sudden the old man knocks the, knocks the, the perpetrator out just like that, you know. You can see that every once in a while on YouTube. It's like, you know, there's something to us. An element of surprise. But they didn't know this person. Well, and it's that, um, like, a lot of people will attribute this to maybe kind of not even that. Like, I think that's ju- that's just a matter of being able to understand people. People are afraid of something that is intimidating, but they aren't afraid of something that looks weak. But something that looks weak and actually hurts you more than something that is strong that is stronger. Yeah, no. potentially. Yeah, I, no, I, I agree with that. But. I think one thing I, I can I can kind of tap back into was um, I mean this is kind of a, a I forget if I ever told this story online or not, but one of the more motivating factors was I mean, it was more kind of a negative. Uh, it, it was oddly enough, I was going to training, and I mm-hmm. was going. This was the second time this had happened while on the way to training, but less dramatically the first time. But I was, I just finished up cleaning uh, my old boss's attic because my old boss was a rich guy who didn't really know what to do most of the time. He was just like, he had a lot of money, he was my friend's stepdad, and like, he, he just like. Move these things around. Move these books and books upstairs. Now move these books downstairs. Now paint that that upstairs. Now move the books upstairs again. Move those books downstairs. I'm like, all right, it's the easy way of making ten bucks an hour. Um. Anyway, I'm riding home on a bike, and it, it was weird because I mean, how I remember this was, I was riding my bike, had my helmet on, everything was fine. It was kind of on a narrow road. And someone comes up behind me. It was actually a classmate of mine. Um, I guess I was 17. No, 16? Must have been 16. And he... And that person rear-ended me with their car. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about, like, a tiny car. We're talking about, like, a sports utility vehicle. Because, you know, he's be bigger. Anyway, um... I get hit with a sport utility vehicle. Um, I go flying over the handlebars of my my bike. I like basically do a flip up like in the air, land on my back, <laughs> smack down on the on the pavement. Bike goes over my head. Helmet's cracked. I'm bleeding left, right, and center. Like just like cuts and scrapes and some bruises and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Bike's wrecked. Um, person gets out there like, "Are you okay?" I'm just like, "Whatever." Um, I grab my bike and I just kind of keep walking. Yeah. And the people on the road and the houses like had saw this and like came running out screaming their heads off. And I'm like, I'm going to training. Bye. And this was like the second time this happened too. And I'll never forget this. It was like a, I had heard police cars and I guess someone called 911 police cars and sirens were coming and um a guy in a golf cart like as far as i could like trauma's weird i don't know if this was trauma or not but i remember this guy this like really like like short dude in like like a cap and just dressed like really warmly for like a summer day and was like in a like police golf cart and was driving all around in a golf cart and he comes up and he's just like are you the guy who got hit by a car? I'm like, no, you look like him. I'm like, okay, bye. And I just keep walking until three cop cars and two ambulances show up. And they force me to get into, into an ambulance and go, and, and go to a hospital. And I was still like, I just need to go to training. I'm like going to training. Mm-hmm. And it was like this like negative reinforcement of just like, I don't care. I got hit by a car. I'm going to training. Yeah. And 
uh, I got home and uh, my, you know, my my dad and mom separated a long time ago. And but my dad was there, um, and my mom was there, and my sister were there, and they're all yelling and screaming at each other, and they're all yelling and screaming at me. And I just kind of like go back into my room. My father like sits down and tries to have man talk with me, and I was just like, dude, I just want to go to training. <laughs> like that's all I want to do right now. And I didn't go to training. Yeah, I, yeah. It, it, it's interesting how when you get focused on something, a lot of things don't matter. Yeah. You know, it's, I mean, whether it's part of training, whether it's just getting there, whether it's, you know, your self-study, whatever it is, or whatever else you got going on in life, you get into that zone, it's like nothing else matters. Boom. Um, yeah. I, you know, I haven't had any stories that fun, but it's... it's uh, <laughs> like on the way to... Meanwhile, on the way to training... But I'm, yeah. I'm, I guess you know. I guess the point of that story is like, for me, it was just more important to go to training, and um, I guess I didn't really realize this, like how like, you know, I can let all that stuff happen. Mm-hmm. I had some stuff, you know, ever teenage angst and all that going on at the same time. Um, I had all that stuff going on, and training can just help you block all that out, even at least to like get it done like to the point where you're like get training done now i'm not saying go out there and get hit by a bunch of right. cars no, no, no. and block everything else out and just keep walking to training but i mean well, you can imagine something like that happening and still well, and you can go to training and you still want to go to training well i i, I think you bring up a, a really good point is like you get into a, a level of focused intentionality you know, think think about this. Not not just from a martial arts standpoint. Look at look at how people get stopped in their everyday life. Yeah. Oh, I, I can't do this. Oh, I can't do this. Oh, I can't do this. And and I think that's one of the things that you do get as a as a reinforcement from martial arts is like, hey, look, you know what? Okay, this didn't go the way it is. You know. Okay, I didn't get this. I didn't get that promotion. I didn't. I didn't get to buy the house of my dreams. I didn't get this. I didn't get that. Hey, guess what? It's one of my favorite things: fart and get over it and move on. Let's go. Let's make something happen. You know, or, or going back to one of my other favorite movies of the '80s, Heartbreak Ridge. You know, one of the best lines Clint Eastwood ever said: "Improvise, overcome, and adapt." Boom. What are you gonna do? Oh, that's where that's from. <laughs> Once again, demonstrating our generational gap. Oh, man. I mean, Dan was, Dan was a military officer, and I tell you what, when that, when that came out, we went and saw that one at the theater. I was like, no, we're going to see that. Like, okay. Not, I'm not like Clint Eastwood, anyway. He's always, always like this Dirty Harry movie. That's... <laughs> crack me up <laughs> so bad. but anyway sorry so we're just, gonna... no, anyway. so we're, we're just remem- remembering the good times when you know life was simple and insanity stayed on the screen instead of breaching its way slowly out into the, into the membrane of culture oh um, yeah no but you know but I, mean, I, I think what people can maybe take away from some of this is that um Outside influences, negative influences, positive influences um, need to enter your training. In, and what I mean by negative influences, things in the negative learning from, not yeah. negative influence. Right. I like to say, say that a lot of my life has been seeing what not to do, but mm-hmm. never really having a good idea what to do. So, yeah. you know, and and one of the other things kind of tack, tack on to this is, you know, being able to make mistakes and learn from your mistakes, I think, are huge. Because, you know, I notice in society, it's like, oh, you have to do this perfect. You have to do this perfect. You have to do this perfect. But what happens if you don't do it perfect? You know, I, I mean, I look, 
look back at some of my bosses, you know, from different different companies that I've worked for, and I've I've had people where they're like, you have to be perfect every single time. And then like my current boss where I'm at is like, okay, things didn't go the way as planned. What did you learn from it? If you didn't learn something from it, we got a problem. If you learn something from your mistake, let's move forward. Let's keep going. You know, you're developing new new ideas and new technology and new solutions. It's like, and and so, and, and personally, I kind of, I, I try not to mess up as much as possible, but I mean, it, it does give me a little bit of freedom to where it's like, okay, I, I'm not so, I, 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 it doesn't have to be perfect. And I think getting into martial arts, I think everybody says, it has to be perfect, it has to be perfect, it has to be perfect. Well, you know what, what happens when it's not? And, and you know, <laughs> You can go back to my previous quote, you gotta improvise overcome and adapt. You know, whenever it's not perfect, you got to do something. And and I think that's that was one of the things, what was it? One of the things Robbie really drilled into me, my first instructor, was okay, now we've done this technique, you know, umpteen kajillion times. Congratulations. You know the technique. Let's see what happens if it doesn't go the way you want it. You know, and like somebody would, you know, instead of just throwing a straight punch, they maybe, you know, kind of jab and punch, you know, maybe your timing was just a little bit off. And, you know, how, how do you deal with that? And, and we work from that angle. And so, I, I don't know, I, I think I think that also plays into my martial arts training as well as having that ability to 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 give me that freedom to okay yeah i messed up while i'm training i'd rather mess up here than if i'm out there and really screw up you know so right how am i how am i going to deal with a screw up and give me practice on that so well and you just hit the nail on the head because it's practice and that's what a lot of when we talk about influences, things coming in and, and kind of helping guide our training, I mean, at the end of the day, it's still training. Right. And when you train, you train for something. And when, when, especially for more classical martial arts, we think about just the one time in a million that we might be out there and suddenly something happens and that we're not prepared for. Yeah. And, and possibly no amount of training is going to prepare us for it. But yeah. in, that, in that very instance, you've got to bring it all together. Um, and yeah. I, think that, I think that's that's huge if we don't understand that. We don't, especially as karateka, we don't understand. We can't bring everything else in our life to get together to stop something bad from happening or start something good, good or start something good and keep it going. Um, we're not we're wasting our time. The training yeah. is not producing what it what it should. So right, and and I, I go back to I'm gonna go right back to the whole circle of this and go back to you know Bruce Lee. I mean, you read the Tao of Jeet Kune Do. You know, okay. I I liked how he how his thought process was through a lot of things. And he would tie things in from, from different aspects of life as opposed to just, here, this is martial arts, this is martial arts, this is martial arts. You know, the bottom line is, you have one life. Martial arts is part of it, family's part of it, work's part of it, education's part of it. What friends, this barbecue, whatever you know, hey, I'm from Kansas right. City, so <laughs> from Kansas City, so barbecue is a way of life here in Kansas City. I'm telling you right now. So anyway, so um, but <laughs> it just is. Yeah. Um, but you know, it, it it all circles back to your life. It's not. 
I, I think people sometimes get so compartmentalized. And, and I see this with a lot of people who do MMA. Well, that's jujitsu, and that's this, and that's that. Well, that's what you're doing. You are developing what works for you in this realm. Period. Right. And, and people don't, sometimes they don't get, they don't get it all taken care of. So, and, and it's not their fault, but it's a lot of how, how Americans just try to learn stuff. It's like they try to compartmentalize it instead of trying to put it together. So, it's just. I think, I think there are good approaches to putting that together. And I think there are flaccid approaches to putting that together. But um, I think that ultimately it just, we don't teach people that you need to put it together yourself. And Bingo. Yeah, I mean, each, now, each person their own. Yeah, exactly. They People got to figure it out. In that, case, it's, in that particular case, it is hard to give them the tools to do that rather than show them examples. Because examples can be great, but if you are limited to examples, not necessarily tools then maybe you can't exactly get there. And then, you know, I think there's some people out there who uh, who are, who don't allow rank or school style or whatever to really block their training, but then they don't also allow, like, other things to block themselves from other people. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Especially yeah. in this age, so... Yeah, no, I I can see that. So okay, no, that's cool. Cool, cool. Anything else you got you got for this this topic, sir? Um, no, I mean, I, I think one of the things that's really I think has been beneficial as well is really getting out of my comfort zone from from reading different books and things like that. Um, not just martial arts books. I, I tend to like business and and uh, leadership books. And so I, I try to find things that really correlate to how, how I've gone about my life and how it really ties into it and really gives me a better perspective. Um, I think... I'll, I'll, I'll mention one other book. Um, probably one of the better ones was a book called First Break All the Rules by a guy by the name of Marcus Buckingham. And it, it, it was because a lot of classical thought was, well, if you're not good at this, you need to really concentrate and go, go learn more about something you're not good at. And and what he said was, well, why do that? Because basically you're going to hate learning something you really don't like anyway. So you're going to push and push and push. And you're going to go from not liking it to absolutely hating it and resisting it. Why not concentrate on the areas that you really do like? And you're going to have the bigger growth in that in those areas. And I, I... I kind of relate to that. I, I look at my academic career. I look at, you know, different things that I've done in martial arts. I mean, I've, I, I tend to develop certain things and, you know, it's like, don't practice, you know, don't take care not to develop only your favorite te technique, neglecting others because it's a weakness in your fence. Well, that's the one guiding principle I wouldn't say I disagree with but I I, I question because some of the things like when I worked with you like on some of the stuff with Tweete and things like that right? I mean I, I really try to develop my Tweete techniques or hand grappling techniques and things like that and I look at how how can I apply it from from a punch? How can I apply it from here? How can I apply it from there? And so I really go go that route and really look at it from a complete analysis on that area. And so 
if you're going to look at something you enjoy from many different areas, you're going to end up going somewhere that you're not necessarily going to understand or enjoy in itself. Rather than trying to start something completely new without any sort of basis for it and then feel way behind and any other things that you're doing aren't are kind of being let go on the wayside. Right. I can understand going that and, and and I'll I'll bring up an example and you know and I'm I'm not I'm not particularly picking on anybody, but I remember an instructor showing me a technique where it was like, I'm out here, and then instead of actually moving in, I would have to reach over and across the body to actually spin the person around and stuff. I'm like, I'm not doing that. I'm because like, you can't. Well, I mean, <clears throat> I'm like, okay, why would I do that with somebody who's smaller than me? I'd literally have to get on my knees, reach under, do this. Right, right, right. No, I, and, and like I said, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, and, and for that person, that probably did work. For that instructor, it probably did work for him. Right. For me, it didn't. I mean, it's like, okay, I'm, I'm five or six inches taller than this person. How am I going to reach under and grab it? No, I'm going to finish this off right here. I'm not going to play around with this. And that's kind of what I'm getting at. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, it it was just, it did not work for me. And it wasn't going to work for me. So, I mean, now the entry on it was like, okay, I can do this, but I'm I'm looking at about six or seven other techniques I could follow up that I wasn't going to cross across the body and keep myself safe. That was me. But I saw that. Right. And so, but anyway, that, that's just, and that gets back to kind of how that book is laid out and how, how that, and like I said, I, I look at my academic career because when I went, and, this, this is kind of a funny story, I took my placement test and getting into first year college. And my, my advisor is like, She's looking at it and going back and forth. She goes, are you autistic? And I'm like, why? And she goes, well, your math score is one of the highest math scores we've ever had in the university. <laughs> cool. She goes, you, you tested in the calculus too. I'm like, well, I've never had calculus. Well, I'm like, oh, all right, awesome. Cool, I'm game. And she goes, but your reading level's at a fourth grade reading level. How'd you get out of high school? And I'm like, well, I had coach for English. You know, I don't know what to tell you. Well, it's, I mean, English, it's funny, English was never my strong suit, but I I made it work enough, you know, good enough to move on. And and that's kind of how I've approached it. What's funny is some of the highest paying jobs I've had have actually been writing jobs. And I'm like, this is quite ironic. Maybe I should have paid a little more attention to this than what I did. But, but that's okay. So, yeah. Anyway. So, sorry, I hope I didn't go completely. No, that goes in, it goes in an interesting direction of that, like, because it goes beyond influence because it goes into strength. And then it goes yeah. into wherever, like, those influence, because ultimately that's a, the internal influence, right? Yeah. We, are, we like doing what we like, what we're good at, and what we enjoy, and we don't like what we aren't good at and don't enjoy. That's right. going to ultimately influence our decisions of where we go. So when we talk about when t- talk about influence, not just outside but also internally, I mean I can definitely relate to that. Um, and you know, kind of the kind of the the sour note to the story I told before was, um, and I was thinking about this a lot today was, you know, when I got gotten into college and I you know I started a karate club and all this other stuff, um, I really let my own personal training go. And it, and it really started to physically affect me and then, like, kind of mentally affect me. And to the point where, like, you know, I put on some pounds and then a year or two later, you know, a bunch of people uh, were giving me a lot of guff about that. And then, um, you know, I had to kind of, like, 
turn it around. And I, I couldn't really put together why at that one time I would let a car hit me and I would still keep walking to a dojo. But on my own, I couldn't take thir- take 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 a 30 take a 30-foot walk out the door to a little actually a really nice field of grass and just start training um but that might be a different discussion for a different time cool that's cool anyway so what do you got going on? so you're going to get this a new bionic leg this week uh, no no I, i'm just getting my my braces are coming in, so that that'll take a lot of pressure off my off my knees and stuff. Cool. And therefore, that that'll allow me to start doing some movement exercises and start trying to build up some type of strength inside that gap. Along with, I've got a not a real heavy but a pretty rigorous um, supplement supplement uh regiment because it's like I'm, I'm trying to do this as natural as possible so right i mean I'm trying to but you know it's either gonna work or it's not so um so yeah that that's that's what i've got going on um but i think i am gonna start taking you know just one of my weapons this week to try to get just get my head off of worrying about my knee and stuff and just kind of get back into okay this does this feel natural does this not feel natural and see just just get back into something because you know after literally almost putting everything down for a month it's just kind of like uh, you know it's it, it's starting to nip at you but you know that you know, I, I i gotta start figuring out how to do this smarter so right rather than the harder yeah yeah i think the days of me crushing out workouts like you know work out till you pass out or done i mean i gotta i gotta start getting smarter with my workout so I get that. This week, I'm I'm trying to to break a little more on the barrier in terms of running distance and stuff, and um, just like also to, like getting my hands on weapons too, and just more like you know you have a I have a morning routine where like I'll wake up and I will do radio taiso. Mm-hmm. Radio taiso is a uh, every Japanese person knows radio taiso, and it's actually weirdly enough the history is apparently from America. Like a little car company in Boston did it, and some Japanese guy saw it, brought it over to Japan. Now everyone in Japan does it, but no one in America knows what it is. So like I'll do that. I'll do like I'll have a stretching routine, and then like do two kata and go for a run. And I'm so, like sorely missing like, and I'm like realizing like I'm sorely missing arm stuff mm-hmm. in like just a morning regiment. So um, what I'm gonna do is just take all the weapons I've got with me and just work on like a morning warm up kind of workout not a full cut or anything just a morning warm-up to get my hands like feeling on the weapons again so you know you get that because weirdly enough i feel like every time you put something like the weapons in your hand you put them down like a day later your hands feel just stronger from having those in there so yeah i I agree so yeah well very cool 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 well, folks, I uh, hope you enjoyed this <laughs> this latest edition of Karate Without Belts. Uh, Jer- Jeremy, uh, any last words for anybody? Hey, have, have a good night. And go all blacks. Keep going. <laughs> Don't forget to keep training, folks. Have a good That's night. That's right.